A huge thanks to all current subscribers of this channel. This channel, you find the Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Testimonies and prayers with Bishop Barra Fonseca. And much more. Now, we make a challenge with you. Invite three friends to subscribe on this channel so they may receive what you have received. Together, let us spread the Word of God. You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my dear listeners. May God bless all of you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. And I would like for you to think in the following verse that Jesus said, a word that he said, that he left it for us. Look at how powerful this word is. Jesus once said, all whom the Father gives me will come to me, and he who comes to me I will never cast out. This is a powerful word. Jesus is the one who said it was not an archangel, was not an angel, was not a common person, but it was God in the person of his Son here on earth. All whom the Father gives me will come to me. So, when a person resists the word of God, when a person, you know, resists the invitation of the Lord Jesus and they deny coming to Him so that they can commit their lives to Him, so that they can have a different life with Him, a new life, when a person resists all the invitations given, that is given, that is in regards to faith in Jesus, because it has nothing to do with religion. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about faith. Faith is different from religion. Faith is this, all whom the Father gives me, that's faith. Meaning, whoever comes to the altar, whoever surrenders to the Lord Jesus, is because the Father brought them, brought them to Jesus. And then the ones that the Father brings to the Lord Jesus, they are accepted the way they are, the way that they are, in the way that they have come, even though not deserving it, even though they are evil, people that are bad within. And it is interesting that the Lord Jesus he is ready to receive everyone, everyone that believes. And who believes? The ones that the Father brings to him. And I remember that there was one time I came to Jesus and I was broken. I was broken hearted. I was downcast and I did not deserve. I didn't deserve to be received by him. But it was the father who sent me to the son and the son accepted me. He accepted me as I am. And until today, we are with him. I am with him. And this powerful word that I'm sharing with you today, you who find yourself suffering, in need, you have tried so many things, went to so many places, you are tired, you are burdened, you had enough of your suffering, you are tired of even being your own self, you are tired of being in this depression, even thoughts of suicide, of, suicide of, of killing yourself, you have had. Because you don't find the solution. And you cannot see no way out. But I tell you that the light that comes from the Word of God is shining upon you right now. Because it says, all whom the Father gives me will come to me. And he who comes to me, I will never cast out. So I have the certainty 
I have the certainty, the conviction that the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit, is speaking to you now. He's actually touching you right now. He's convincing you in this moment and making you to remember what has been your life up until now. Suffering, pain, deceptions. There is no money in this world that can resolve your problem, right? Tell me the truth. You are there, desperate, finding yourself lost, and if you had all the money of the world, it would not resolve your problem. Isn't it so? So very well. The Lord Jesus, He is with His arms open, waiting for you and you who believe. And you believe because the Father is giving you to the Lord Jesus. And it's the case of this person that you're going to hear the testimony right now. This person that was lost for a long time and today they have a new life. Well, from the beginning, um, my life was already difficult. My mom, she was a young mother. She, um, she had me when she was 15. So you could imagine her life was already difficult, struggling with her studies and working, supporting a baby. And uh, my dad, he wasn't much help. Um, he wasn't but about 17, so he himself, he didn't even know how to handle the situation. He'd start hitting me um, for anything and for nothing. Um, he'd use extension cords sometimes, and he'd hit me repeatedly with that. And he was a very built person. He was really strong. He went to the gym a lot. And um, when I was three, later on, my father, he left. So it was me, my mom, and my little sister. And I saw that she was crying. And I thought to myself, I don't want to do that to my mom. I'm going to take care of her and my sister. And uh, my mom comes in the room. She said, let's go, let's go. We have to go. We don't want to be here anymore. I'm getting dressed, and I hear a really loud noise. He just slammed her, and she's about six months pregnant with his baby. The first thing that crossed my mind is kill this guy before he hurts your mom. Now I started uh, picking fights with people, fighting. Uh, then I started drinking alcohol. And eventually, I started smoking marijuana myself. I got filled up with anger and frustration right there. And then I started imagining all these things I wanted to do to my stepfather. Like, I wanted to see blood. I wanted to stab him. And for me, that was completely out of character. I never had a fight in my life before that point. So I began um, picking fights with people and learning what worked, what didn't work. And this aggression just kept building up because I saw the damage I could do. And it came to a point where I started imagining, um, like, fantasies of how badly I can beat somebody. I wanted to see, you know, somebody's face, face on the cement, on the concrete, on the ground. I wanted to see somebody laid out on the ground, completely destroyed. I would start looking at myself, like, what am I doing? I would start acting like the very person that I so much hated. When I was uh, 17, I just turned 17, I said, uh, no more. I mean, I'm empty, I'm unhappy, I have nothing to lose. And I said, okay, God, I see what I've done with my life, and I don't like it. I want to see what you can do with it. So I came into the church and I started listening to the, to the words, the messages. Um, most of them applied to me. They talked about people that were frustrated with problems, people that couldn't take it anymore, people that wanted to change. I saw that it worked. The more I listened to what was being said, the better I felt. But these people, they didn't give up on me even when I had given up on myself. All I have to say is, if God could change me, he can change anybody. If he can solve my problems, why can't he solve yours? You see, my dear listener, just look at this point. Just to think a little bit. This person came to the church and they were not expecting to see the results as they saw it right away. And you know why? Because people think that faith and religion rides together. And it's not so. When you absorb the Word of God, when you learn to exercise God's Word, and you perceive its dimension, you perceive the greatness of His Word, and you believe in it, you are exercising the faith that God has given you. And then this begins to change your life because God is working within you. So deliverance takes place. But religion doesn't bring that. Religion, in fact, works with doctrines. You can't do this, you can't do that. Obligations here, obligations there. 
but faith, the pure faith, the intelligent faith, takes us to seek what God has promised. And that's it. The work of the Universal Church ba is based deeply in this. We claim what God has promised because we don't deserve anything. It doesn't matter if I deserve or if I don't. That doesn't matter because the promise are for those who believe. So if I believe, if I believe, so then I have the right to charge God what He has promised. And this is what we teach in the Universal Church. So people, they without direction, people that are tired of suffering, people that want to kill themselves, people that are desperate, people that are living a piece of hell right now in their life. It doesn't matter what you did in your life. If they are in prison, if they are people who are bad to society, people that bring problems to society, it doesn't matter. God is great and powerful to transform the life of those that showed at least a little bit of faith upon his words. And this is easy and it's free and you have to pay nothing. The only thing that you need to do is manifest this faith upon the Almighty God and that is going to change your life. Let us listen to a song and we'll be right back. For your mercy and your grace, oh Lord, I believe and I worship you, you're the one that I will serve, I will lift your name up high, cause I believe. does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, 
they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear Him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life, are humbling themselves, repents from their wicked ways, and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God. Since growing up, I had a lot of problems in my family with my dad and my mom. My dad would cheat on my mom, and it would be something that it wasn't just one time, it was several times with different women. I hated him for what he was doing to my mother. I hated him because he was hurting her, and at the same time I was angry at her because she wasn't doing anything about it. She was letting it happen. She would get upset, but then later she would forgive him, and she was just taken back. So that would make me angry, but I never had the boldness to confront her, to confront him. She would lash out, I guess, with her problems and everything, she would get angry at me. She would say things that really hurt me. She would say she you know, hated me. She would say, you know, why did I have you? It was such a mistake. I remember as soon as I was old enough to understand, to know what is wrong and, and to make a wrong decision, she would just start on me. Everything that I would do was not good enough and she would just yell at me for it and get angry and say, you know, you're worthless. Why did I have you? I'm gonna put you up for adoption. Nobody wanted me, especially her, because if feeling that inferiority, I was depressed. I would think maybe, you know, since nobody wants me, since everything is so horrible, my life is pointless, then maybe it's better if I did die. Well, when I was going through all this pain, I was feeling lost, depressed, just pointless, worthless. I never blamed God. I didn't feel I was worthy enough. I had always been taught that God was good and I was bad. And God was always right, and I was always going to be wrong. You don't have to be like this. This is not who you are. And when I started to see that, then that's when I really started to change. Going was what made me strong. To fight against the problems, to, to react good, to really make a change in my life, I wouldn't have had the strength to do that. I would have, would have just kept living the life of pain and accepting it. Now everything is really good. Me and my mom have a really good relationship. I love her very much and she loves me and we get along perfectly, you know, and I see my future really bright. I see possibilities, I see great things because I chose the right path. If God helped me, if he saved me from these negative thoughts, from this feeling of inferiority, of, of worthlessness, then I know he can help you. I know. No matter what you're going through, no matter what situation, no matter how negative, how horrible you feel, He can help you and, and He has a solution. For the times that I was lost And you found me, oh Lord For all the tears that I've cried And you wiped them friends 
Satan's head up and gone You came closer to me attending church, um, Universal. My problems began back when I was in my 20s. We had an accident in our family, and it just took me way off. Drinking, partying, on drugs. I mean, running the streets. Um, neglecting my kids, but giving them what they want so I can get away and do what I want to do. Um, having fun with my friends, not being a mother to my kids. I was there, but not a real mother. And pretty much was just out there in the world. My addiction started from being with friends, getting it free. Then once you get addicted to it, that was it. You're on your own. You're all gone. So you got to do what you got to do. I spent a lot of money. I even got up to like three and four hundred dollars with the credit on cocaine. I got so good with the dope dealers that they would just give it to me and drinking, and then I would pay my bills. Well, I'd pay half of my bills. The main part, keep a roof for my kids. But then sometimes, I didn't pay my gas and lights. But I made ends meet, but I kept my habit up. Once I started getting high, I was happy. But when I lay down and go to sleep, then I think about it, so I'll get back up and I'll do it again. When my kids got away from me, and my son, the police started bringing home, and my daughter was talking back, and. I'll come home and they have wild parties going on, and I was neglecting them. Yes, I tried to stop, but I wasn't fooling nobody but myself because I might stop for like a month, two months, then I go to my family and I would tell them I quit. But then maybe a month or so later, I'm back, you know, partying again. Yes, I did. I decided to come to church. It was December the 31st. I brought my New Year's in in 2008 in the church house. When I knew I had to change is when I found out I was going to have my first grand um, baby. 
and I knew that I needed to be there for my son because he was going down the wrong path, and I didn't know he was going to change over himself. But by me changing and going to church, he, he changed over too. And it was because of the grand, first grandbaby, and she's three years old now. I started being at home with my kids all the time, cooking, being there when they go to school, being there when they come home. I wasn't drinking that much. I didn't have that much company in the house. And then my, well, my oldest daughter, she started respecting me more even though she was at the house. My life was wonderful. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. We are coming to the end of our participation. We are going to be back tomorrow in the same time in this radio station. And may God bless all of you abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, come close and hear my cry. I am in need of you. Come. Come close and hear my cry. I am in need of you. Come rescue me. Guard my soul, for I am faithful to you. Savior, Savior.
Before I came to the church, I was destroyed. My stepbrother came to a point where he began to watch pornography. So, of course, I became the person that he was testing on. And there became a time where I wasn't just touching anymore. He began to physically rape me practically every day. I would try to defend myself, and he would hit me even harder. From there, I had a friend that she was close to me, but she didn't know what I was going through. She told me that cutting myself helps. And so then I began to cut myself, and I did feel what she was talking about, the relief per se, but that relief is so temporary. From there came the desire to kill myself, and I tried to kill myself twice, but every time I never had the courage to actually put it through. That also began to like bring problems in the family because not only was everyone trying to deal with what happened to me, but I was also causing trouble as well. I would come home late at like five o'clock in the morning, drunk, falling up and down the stairs. I was very rebellious. My mom would tell me, hey, don't go to that party. And I'd go. And she began to notice like the bruises, the cuts and stuff. So she would ask me, you know, hey, where did that come from? And I'm like, none of your business. And as I got older, I came to learn that um, my stepbrother's mother, she had did witchcraft on her son when he came from Cape Verde to mess up our family because she still was in love with my stepfather. So um, I began to understand why I couldn't sleep at night. I would see spirits. I would try to fall asleep. It took me at least like six hours to close my eyes. My grandma, she was close to the point where she was going to die. So she came to live with us in Rhode Island. And um, she, we had a church there. So every time she would visit, she would bring me on the weekends and stuff. But when she came to live with us, she started demanding me to go more. And my grandma, she had um, made me promise two days before she died that we would continue to go to the Universal Church. When she asked us, she was like, oh, I want you guys to make Vovo a promise. And I'm like, okay, you know, what do you want? You know, at the point she was dying, I was like, whatever you want. And she was like, I want you guys to promise me that you guys are gonna keep going to Universal Church. We were like, okay. Why do, you, why do you want us to keep going there? I don't understand why it's so important to you. And she was like, because that was where I met the living God. And I really converted. It was when I made the decision to just let go. Stop trying to pretend like I'm okay. Like I can do it on my own. I realized that I was, I was small. I was weak and I needed God's help. So that's when things really began to change for me. And then my mom had her battles and everything that she was facing, you know, after my grandma died. School was like, I, I almost stayed back. I don't even, I can't even count how many classes I even failed. Drinking every weekend wasn't enough. There was nothing that was filling me. Today, I have peace. I, I no longer have negative thoughts. I no longer see spirits. I no longer suffer from anything. And now my life is, is blessed in every area. Thank God for that. I've always been a person that was independent, but now I depend on God. So it's like my life is just striving completely. Um, my spiritual life, my connection with God is, is so blessed um, to be able to have somebody that you call your best friend. Somebody you don't even see, but they're your bestest friend ever. My life before I was an addict, um, I got in a relationship really young, 15 years old. Um, I thought it was a better choice at the time. The relationship that I was in, I kind of just like, was filled with so much hate and resentment. I pushed uh, my family away. That's what caused the depression. I started to get involved in stronger drugs. Um, I started to get involved with a lot of people that sold drugs. I seen that it was an easy way to make money. So I left school, I left the job that I had, and I went after the, the easy money. I was selling drugs, it was so much easier that I started using more, more drugs. Um, as more, the more that I would sell, I would go to different states, I would go to different um, towns, and it wasn't just a little bit, it was a, a lot. I would leave my children with my grandmother because I was afraid to take them with me because of the type of environment that I would be in. You know, I didn't want them to, to get taken away. And it came a point in time when I got another relationship. Um, that's when it was kind of like my very rock bottom. Um, there was no money. Now I couldn't even get, style the drugs because I didn't even have the drugs. I was so consuming so much. You know, my daughter, she, was, she came knocking on the door one time and I was completely like so high. And I was just angry, you know, and she interrupted me. And I remember opening the door so angry and I was just like, you know, what do you want? And I remember she looked at me and I will never forget. From that moment, she just like, you know, mom, you're always stuck in the room. You know, you don't care about us. And, and it kind of it hurt me so much because I was helpless. And my husband, um, he had fell out a couple times um, unconscious. And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was wrong. 
So I kind of like panicked and I called my cousin. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but, and I started thinking of all these things, like what's gonna happen with my kids, what's gonna happen with me, you know, what if he's dead? And he would come back to like conscience and he wouldn't remember. He started to manifest, he'd become really angry. He'd become really abusive, really aggressive. He's never done that before. So I was kind of in fear, like what's going on? I would literally not want to stay in the household. I would stay in a motel because I was so afraid of what was going to happen. Then my aunt, she mentioned about, you know, well, there's, I've heard some, you know, things about this church that I used to go to, you know, but all I knew was I needed help. I needed help. So I went with her. Like I have peace. I'm not angry anymore. I have a positive attitude. Um, I'm drug free. Like I no longer suffer with an addiction. Things that I, would start and never complete, I'm able to start and complete now. To like go to school, go back to school. I started it, I never finished it. And here I am now going back to school and I'm going to complete it. I'm a very involved parent. And they look at me and they, they see somebody different. My daughter mentioned the other day, why are you going back to school? Why are you doing these things? You know, before you didn't even take time to sit there and speak with us and and she just went up to give me a hug. So when you're serving God, you're gonna serve Him with all of your strength. And you're gonna see that He's gonna come and He's gonna change like everything. And I see that God, He's with me in everything that I do. A follower waits for bread and fish. A disciple is a fisherman. A follower fights for growth. A disciple fights to reproduce. A follower surrenders part of their goods. A disciple gives up all their life. A follower loves freedom. A disciple enjoys serving and sacrifice. A follower is worth because they add. A disciple because they multiply. A follower is conditioned by circumstances. A disciple uses it to exercise their faith. A follower is valuable. A disciple is indispensable. Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. I had a lot of hate inside of me towards my, my mom. So I felt rejected. I felt like she didn't love me. I just always felt like if I was alone, I had a little brother at that time, which I always felt like if I was his mom, I was always taking care of him. Just a lot of situations in the house that I don't feel that I shouldn't have had to been placed in. I was very rebellious. I started drinking at a very young age. Just trying to, to feel that emptiness. When I left my house at 16, I had met uh, my kid's father. We ended up living together. He was a gang member and it was a different kind of suffering. He was unfaithful to me. He was involved in selling drugs. He was murdered and he died in my arms. That was beginning of another suffering. Because of all of that, we ended up uh, being homeless. So me and the kids ended up living in the car. I didn't want to live. I was thinking about committing suicide because I didn't know how to be a mother and a father. You know, my son caught me in the bathroom with the pills in my hand. That was, I think, the hardest, you know? And that is where I said, this is, this is it. I felt the difference when I left that first Friday. I started seeing things falling into place. You know, of course things come and go, problems, but it's, you handle them in a different way. Where there was hopelessness before, there was hope. They teach you how to use your faith. They teach you how to, to put it into practice, how to see results you know, and get those fruits, see those fruits from your faith, an intelligent faith. All the curses are turned into blessings. I have only come to hear about your power. Time and time again, I've served you more, not knowing who you are. Though I hear so much about him, to me, he's still unknown. This God has torn down walls of stone, parted waters of the sea. 
When my life does not show meaning, does not show him what I feel. I know time has never changed the greatness of your power. God, I know how great you are. And I've come to know you more. Materialize yourself in me, oh God. Who does not know you, Lord? May we get in the struggle. But those who know you fight and live through under your protection. It was impossible for me to break free of the drugs as I was surrounded by drugs. I was not only taking drugs, I was also selling drugs, I was dating drug dealers. Everything around me, all my surroundings was to do with drugs. I had no normal life. My life was based on all kinds of drugs and alcohol. So for me, this was an impossible case. By coming to the church, I soon learned how to have strength, and I was taught how to use my faith and putting the two together, I was able to get rid of this addiction. It didn't happen overnight, but within the first few weeks, I already saw changes and the impossible case became possible. Change my heart, oh God. Make it
Like you.